Garfield, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. When my guest from Australia first started in healing, about every fifth person was healed. After seven years, often every person is healed. He wants to teach you how to have the same results. We call it raw outback power. Next on It's Supernatural. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I'm here with John Miller from Australia. I've, I've seen him on the internet, and uh, uh, he, he was praying for me last night. And I'll tell you, that is a tangible power that's coming out of you. Tell me, just kind of whet our appetite, tell me one recent miracle. Well, well just last week, I was doing a healing seminar, and uh, when I do seminars, I do, I do um, demonstration, and, and uh, a man there for five years struggled on a walking stick, his, his legs were numb, he, he worked in an iron foundry, a 600 pound lump of metal hit him on the side, it tore all the muscles and nerves, and he was on, uh, he had, had, a, had, a, had a machine that pumped um, painkillers uh, right. morphing into him, and, and that could not even begin to dull the pain. And for five years, he struggled like, a, like an old man, a young man. And then I called Jesus. up to demonstrate yeah. healing, laid hands on them of Jesus. The power got touched me, fell down, and then he got up. How do you feel, mate? There's no more pain. And he I'm ran. Healed. He ran. Oh, in fact, he, yes. he, he, I, I'll tell you, John. I felt that raw outback power, but go ahead. And he ran out the door and I called that, watch, watch out for the man. bears. Because <laughs> it's out in the country. But you say every believer should be able to walk in that raw outback power. Um, uh, I, but uh, 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 this is ridiculous. How old is your grandson? Well, I've got a, one, one grandson. I've got quite a few grandchildren. He's nine now. Tell me about the nine-year-old. Okay. And by the way, if the nine-year-old can do this, guess what? <laughs> okay, I've got one grandson, Bo Mellor. He's, uh, he's had a healing ministry, ministry for 18 months. <laughs> and, it, and it happened, I came to my son's church and I was ministering, and he sat there in the front row watching his granddad do all now? the miracles. Yes, I can hear. And after I left, he decided to hold healing meetings. And, uh, and I hadn't laid hands on him, but in his heart, he, he said he wanted to be, he wants to be like me. And so he began to, to round up the neighborhood children, began to um, pre preach the gospel, lay hands, and they're getting healed. And so he prays for people at his school, uh, he prays for adults, no prays for children. And they told them the school, you've got to stop praying for these children. This is not a Christian school. And my grandson said, said they have a right to hear the word of God. <laughs> now, that's his, that's his grandson. Tell me about how old was your father when he started in ministry? Okay, well, my dad was 69. He was a drunken, alcoholic, aggressive man, anti-Christ. He had an amazing encounter with Christ. He got born again, filled with the Spirit, and he began his first healing ministry, going out and knocking on doors. He first began to ask all the neighbors who hated him to forgive him. He started a Bible study. He rounded up all the unsaved neighbors, and, and he'd have them in his home. Here's their son that they hated. He he asked them to forgive them, and he, he began to minister to them. He began his ministry at 69, and in those days, I didn't believe in healing, and he began to mentor me in healing. You, you know, 
You told me uh, before we went on the air that your father was one angry man. Very angry. Uh, he, he, he would say horrible things to you as you grew up. He, he would literally, unbeknownst to him, he was cursing you, cursing you. All the time. You're, you're, uh, and he was an alcoholic, and then your mom had severe mental problems. Yeah. And you had to live in homes, uh, and you were in a motorcycle gang. Yeah. And you got into a horrific accident, and two bikers saw your accident. That were strong. They were part of a Christian bike club. Yeah. They follow you to the hospital. What happened? Well, what happened is they came into the casualty, casualty as they were me up. And one of them said, he said, you know, God loves you and has a plan for your life. And I got home out of the hospital. I couldn't stop thinking that Jesus loves me and has a plan for my life. So I'm, I'm lying in bed one one night, and I had a lot of depression and mental torment. And one night I just cried out. I said, Jesus, if you're real, set me free, help me, forgive me. And this presence came in the room. I fell asleep. I woke up in the morning. I felt this amazing peace. I looked out the window, I could see how green the leaves were. I could see the, I could hear the birds singing. I thought, what's the strange sensation? Then I realized it must have been my prayer. Jesus must have come to me and said, since that day, my life has never, ever, ever been the same. That's our guy. I pray he become your guy because he already is. You just have to know that. Uh, now, uh, you were preaching to everything living, but you, <laughs> didn't know a thing about miracles. So you go to a people group, and as I understand it, you don't even know their language, the Aboriginal. Yes. Uh, and how many people came to your first meeting? Well, what happened is I, is, is, I, is I worked as a missionary amongst the tribal Aboriginal people of the Northern Territory. I was based in the town of Catherine, and I had an outreach at a place called Binjari, this, this, this Aboriginal Jesus reservational Lord. community. And I had one old lady, and I had three Jesus. or four children. That's all I had for five months. And my church Jesus was just a field. I sit on the log, they sit on the ground. I share bi simple Bible stories and I share about Jesus. And then, then, I, then I became so desperate, I began to fast and pray uh, 10 days a month from the first to the 10th. But, but the thing is, I wasn't praying for healing for them, I was praying for them to find Christ. But after five months, one day I was there preaching, preaching out in the grass there, and I had, I had a, and this old lady always limped, and I had this compassion to pray for her. You know, I'd never seen anybody healed. I laid hands on her leg, and I thought nothing more of it. I wasn't really expecting God to do anything. And the next week I went there, there was a crowd. I thought, why are they here? I found out the old lady was healed. And, and, then, they, and then, of course, they wanted me to pray for them. God healed them. And then they called me the missionary man who, healed, who heals. And so my brain was confused because I didn't really believe that God would do this today. And, the, and, and you know, despite me, despite me, God moved. <laughs> You also bumped into witch doctors, demon-possessed oh, dogs. Oh, yeah. Demon-possessed dogs? Yeah. Well see, well, see, out there amongst the Aboriginal community, they had the Gadachi men or witch doctors, and they put trumpet curses on us. In fact, I'd go to have meetings in these, in these remote areas, and the witch doctors would come out, and they'd come out and attack the people, and they'd punch them. In fact, they had these, uh, they called them camp dogs, and the dogs are demon-possessed. And, uh, and, and every time you pray for people or mention the blood of Jesus, they go rabid and wild and attack you. And so, so, so when I had to pray for the people, I had to have a, what I call a camp dog stick. And when I was praying, I had to beat the dogs, and the, and the dogs This be, is not your average church. <laughs> I hope. And so the, dog, the, the dogs they have their, their jaws around my ankles, and I'm praying, and I'm bashing that. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, guys are coming in and, and punching the people in the team, getting the microphones and hitting them over the head. It was well, wild. Well, I'll tell you what, he had to pray <laughs> and fast because there is a level of reality mm -hmm. that is dark yeah. and evil, and he was in it. 
And if he didn't pray and fast, I don't think I'd be talking to no. him today. But then he goes to Scotland and major miracles break out. And, and then all the secular press is actually interviewing him about the miracles because they went through a skeptic saying they came back as believers. Be right back. <laughs> ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is not just another Christian TV network. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. ISN lets me watch my favorite shows anytime I want. These exclusive programs are life-changing. Multitudes report getting healed and having their prayers answered. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, you know, these great miracles started breaking out around among the Aboriginal people, but then you go to Scotland. Yeah. That's where you really saw it break That's out. Right. What happened? What happened in Scotland is that as it began, I went to a small church in the slums of t about 11 to 12 people. And no, the, you go from the witch doctors to the slums. Yes. And, uh, well, yeah, wait, what a ministry. And the, and the place was so dangerous, the police wouldn't go into this area. And, uh, and the pastor had his cars torched twice. They had knives. And they t they to, it's, to, it's to beat up the people from what, the church. Weren't you afraid? I wasn't afraid. I see why God has entrusted you with this great anointing. What, what did you see in, in Scotland? Well, what I saw in Scotland was outstanding miracles. I began going down the street and preaching from the street corners and the bus stops and crying out to people to come to Jesus. And, and then, a, then a, a, the first small group came of about 12 people. Jesus and one lady didn't have an water. eardrum. From, from five years of age, and she was in the late fifties. She had no balance. She had chronic pain. Mm -hmm. She had all, and but, and, I, and, I, and God hear. amazingly healed her. I can hear. She went back to the surgeons. I examined her. God grew an eardrum. I told you, it's a miracle. After half a century. I can hear everything you're saying. And what happened? This. This lady could never swim. She couldn't go in the airplane. She could never get a driver's license. After the miracle, she got a driver's license. She could go in the airplane. She could swim, do everything. Yeah. Create a miracle. I, I would imagine that you had more people than you could contain trying to come to your meetings. It's amazing. People came from all around the world, all around Europe. In fact, the newspapers did major stories, the biggest newspapers. It made front headlines of papers. Tell me a miracle that they wrote about that they liked. The first miracle, I came back to Australia, and once again, a reporter came to expose me. He's sitting with a camera, waiting to see I was a fraud. A lady who had, had MS, was disabled. They, they, they helped to the front, she couldn't move her toes, she had numb legs, chronic pain. They helped her to the front. After prayer, power God touched her and, her and she could walk. Her toes could move and this reporter put front headlines, major paper, I saw a miracle. <laughs> Second media. And, and now, sometimes people pump the press to get them to do things. What did you do to get such front page coverage? Pray and fast. <laughs> <laughs> no press agent? It's, it's, it's no press, people would ask me, who's your press agent? I said, oh, I, said I don't have anyone but Jesus. I, I, I wonder, most people after you pray, if nothing happened, would go into unbelief. Yeah. And many times we see people come that might be healed the first time. First time in Scotland, the lady came from Belfast in a wheelchair, disabled, couldn't walk for nine years. She came to three meetings. Each meeting, I said, you come next time, we'll keep believing for you. The fourth meeting, she just go to the wheelchair and walked. Still, still healed today. One time, you asked God, how are all these great miracles happening? And you had a vision. Yeah, well, well uh, one time in Scotland, we just saw the past went from having a handful of people to church overflowing. People couldn't get in the door. Miracles go. Newspapers coming and reporting the miracles, different newspapers. And what happened was that uh, um, one time I was, they brought a lady that she couldn't walk, they carried her in. Her hands were like claws, her feet were clawed up. She had chronic pain, nerve pain, 
half right shoe. She was from about eight years disabled, and they, they had to carry her in, and they sat her on a chair. And, uh, and, and as I laid hands on her, I just touched her hands, and it's just the same as a, as, a, as a rosebud would open when the sun comes up. You know, her hands just unfurled. Her legs unfurled. All the pain, and she walked normally, totally healed. And so, and so the next day, I'm sitting in the church. I told the pastor, I'm tired. Just have a normal service. I'm sitting there, and I'm asking God, God, how did that happen last night? I remember, how did, how, what happened? You know, I don't always ask God, but how did that happen? And you know, I don't always get visions, but then God showed me such a clear vision of the night before. I'm standing there to bring the lady up. They carried her up, hands all, all like claws, her feet are clawed up. And, and then I, I saw in the vision, as I reached over and touched her, then I saw Jesus next to me, and as my hands reached out, his hand moved with mine. I thought, he's, it's so real. It's so real. We, we don't always see the spirit world, but if, you, if we knew how close he is, and you know, we are the hands. Okay, but people, but wait, people look at you and they say, okay, he's got it. What do you say to them? Well, you know what? I don't have it, but I have Jesus. Yeah. I don't have it. And you know what? And the people who know me would know, that can't be John Mellor. <laughs> it's got to be. It's Jesus. It's, 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 you know what? It's by, I found this, Sid. Well, one thing I learned amongst Aborigines, it's simple, childlike faith. So, it's so simple, it's difficult. People often overanalyze. Oh, people out there, I want to tell you, you, you often, you often overanalyze everything. It's so simple, it's easy. It's so, so simple. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick. The sick, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's not complex, it, it's simple. I, you know what, when we come back, and this is what I love about this guy, he makes it so simple, but that's the way. Look, did Jesus <laughs> say, become like a little child? Yes. We'll be right back, he's gonna pray for us. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe ten, you commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN. The It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers, or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation, but with the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. 
Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So, John, if I was to say to you, what is the biggest reason for miracles? Answer that. Well, the biggest reason for miracles is very simple is that Jesus is alive. Jesus risen from the dead. The same Lord that walked this planet 2,000 years ago, He is here. He is alive. He is alive. You want changes? Man changes, but He does not change. The same miracles from, from Genesis to Revelation, the same power of God has not changed. People change, but He never changes. That's why miracles are the same today. I want you to prove it. I want you to pray for people as God directs, even pray for an impartation yeah. of the anointing God's put upon you. Go ahead. Okay. Right now, I want to pray for you right now. The power of the Lord is present to heal. And right now, as I pray, people will be healed. Wherever you are, the power of God's present to set you free. I'm going to pray right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now that you are a healer. And Lord, that you're power just flow right now. I command arthritis go right now. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus. All inflammation be healed now in Jesus' name. Blindness right now. I command eyes to be healed. I command blurred vision to be healed right now. Be healed healed in Jesus' name. All eye problems be healed now. Sinus problems, allergy problems, allergy to wheat and dairy, dairy right now, pollen right now, be healed in Jesus' name. I decree healing for deafness. Deaf is open right now, open right now. Headaches right now, migraines right now, depression, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia right now, bipolar right now. I break that right now. I decree total healing in the name of Jesus, I break every generational curse. Freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, heal hearts right now. Heart fibrillation, heart problems. Heal the arteries right now. I declare creative miracles. Brand new hearts, brand new lungs. Every breathing problem right now. I break asthma right now. Emphysema right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer. I break cancer in Jesus' name. I command every tumor to shrink and disappear. Every cancer cell to die. Cancer, go in Jesus' name. Damaged knees, plantar fasciitis, painful feet, ankles, varicose veins right now, itchiness, psoriasis, and uh, eczema right now. All gut problems right now. All problems of, uh, of the ovaries. I decree uh, abnormal menstrual cycles. I can have fibroids to dissolve right now. I decree prostates to be healed. I break prostate cancer right now. Swollen prostates right now. Incontinence right now. Every stomach problem right now be healed. Every I decree a miracle in the livers right now, and in kidneys right now. Total healing, every organ of the body. Painful, damaged, elbows, tendonitis, couple tunnel. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I come against paralysis right now. I come against damaged spines right now. Every incurable disease right now. Lord, even, even diseases I haven't mentioned it, believe them for, I stand right now. I think of your anointing flowing out right now and healing people and setting them free. I declare it right now in the wonderful name of Jesus and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, moved by your power. Revive them. Stir them up right now in your wonderful name. Total healing. Restoration. Even our families who are listening right now. Let the anointing flow into our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren, aunts and uncles, whatever city they are, whatever nation they are, let the same anointing flow from this place. I declare miracles in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Whoa. Right now, I, I declare, I, right now I pray for impartation of healing right now. I pray for every person who's listening to this. God, I release that anointing on my life over their lives right now. Anointing just flow, Holy Spirit, just flow in your power over every person. Lord, let's saturate them right now. Move in their lives. When they lay hands on people, your power will flow. You, people will be delivered and set free by every disease and infirmity. In the name of Jesus, Receive it right now, like a little child. Receive it right now. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
for he himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in himself, to create in himself. His purpose was to create one new man, one new man, one new man, один новый человек, the Adam Chadash Echad, one new man. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Lori Ditto. Join me on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I share how God allowed me to experience the sights, sounds, and feelings of hell itself and how it's changed my life forever.